In Iceland, they'd like to build a direct route from uh, Alftanes to Reykjavik. And uh, it makes sense, uh, they need that road. But look, there's a lot of people that are against it, including environmentalists. They're worried about splitting up the uh, habitat of some of the uh, animals that live there, and they've got some concerns. Well, there's another community that has a concern. It's the people that are worried about the huldufolk. Who are the huldufolk? They are the hidden folks. Trolls, elves. Interesting. Uh, now, together the environmentalists and the, and the huldufolk people have gotten together and they've formed Friends of Lava and they are fighting back. In fact, they have gotten the Icelandic Supreme Court to delay the road as they figure out if there is going to be environmental concerns and whether there are going to be concerns about elves along the way. They say there might even be an elf church on the path and that's why it's holy ground. Now, Iceland has a slightly different tradition than we do. So, for example, during the 13 days before Christmas, uh, they have the Yule Lads that come to town and that's 13 different uh, characters uh, that are trolls. Uh, one, for example, is Stufur. He's extremely short and eats uh, crust left in pants. That's a very specific troll. And the pot scraper who snatches leftovers and the hurtaskeller or the door slammer. So if you hear a door slam every once in a while, well that's obviously the hurtaskeller. So they've got to be protected, right? In fact, uh, the Associated Press explains. Elf advocates in Iceland have joined forces with environmentalists to urge authorities to abandon a highway project that they claim will disturb elf habitat, including an elf church. All right. Now you say, come on, this is ridiculous. The people of Iceland don't really believe this. I guess the environmentalists are using it as a ruse for their purposes, etc. Well, you would be wrong. According to a poll done in 2007, you know how many people of Iceland believe that elves might exist? 62%. 62%. I know that seems a little unbelievable, um, but we also have our traditions that are unbelievable. I'll get to those in a second. Uh, first we go to uh, a seer. Now she, uh, these seers apparently can see the trolls and the elves and, and they can uh, do telepathy with them and find out what their intent is. And in this case it's Ragnildur Jonstotir. It will be a terrible loss and damaging both for the elf world and for us humans. We actually found another elf lobbyist, a well-known advocate of elves. And on the issue of the road, here's what he said. You shall not pass! <laughs> He's for the elves. So now look, uh, when you actually go to environmentalists, talk to uh, environmentalists in Iceland, they make interesting point. He says, look, uh, Magnuson is one of them. He says, I know so some people find this elf stuff uh, ridiculous, but, quote, I got married in a church with a god just as invisible as the elves, so what might seem irrational is actually quite common with Icelanders. That's actually a terrific point. So from our point of view, <laughs> elves that live in the mountains, that's obviously not true. The real god is obviously the invisible one that sent his son to walk on water and to turn water into wine and to raise the dead and to himself ri raise, rise from the dead three days after he died and that came from a virgin mother. <laughs> you crazy Icelanders. <laughs> How silly of you. Really? So Terry Gunnell, who's a folklore professor, explains this. He says, this is a land where your house can be destroyed by something you can't see, where the wind can knock you off your feet, where the smell of sulfur from your taps tells you that there is an invisible fire not far below your feet, where the northern lights make the sky the biggest television screen in the world, and where hot springs and glaciers talk. And basically explains, people needed a way to explain all of that. So they came up with, well, if there's an earthquake and the rocks fall, the elves must have pushed them. Now, we had our own way of explaining things 2,000 years ago. Well, you know, if we lost the war, the gods must not have favored us. Why? Because we didn't sprinkle the goat blood in the right parts of the temple. And we didn't take the pig entrails and do the correct voodoo with them. But that's perfectly rational. And God, if he wanted us to win in the New Testament, well, I'm not sure if we win or lose with a seven-headed dragon, but he would have sent a seven-headed dragon one way or another. But the elves, the silly elves, well, those are obviously old myths to explain things that we can explain now with right science. The same exact thing that Western traditions deny so often. 
Finally, Bjork was asked about this. Obviously, she's one of the most famous people to come out of Iceland. And when they asked her whether they really believe in elves in Iceland, she said, quote, we do. It's sort of a relationship with nature, like with the rocks. The elves all live in the rocks, so you have to. It's all about respect, you know. Now, that might seem ridiculous to respect the elves. But think about it. Isn't that exactly what our Christians here say? You have to respect my beliefs about the sky god and his son that turned a little bit of bread into a lot of bread and a little bit of fish into a lot of fish. How did he do it? With magic from the sky god. You have to respect that. But the guys who believe in elves, they're idiots.